So, welcome to uh, lesson 23 of the course on industrial automation and control. Today, we will be talking about CNC machines that is numerically computer numerically controlled machines. So, uh, as usual, let us look at the instructional objectives of this lesson. So, after learning the lesson, the student should be able to describe the main features of a CNC machine, what makes it, describe its main advantages, why we should spend money to buy these machines, they are very expensive, explain the main features of part programming, because these machines are automated, they can be programmed. So, the programs are called part programs. So, we will see some basic features of part programming. And finally, the drives, the CNC machines create motions, all machines create motions, machines especially which are used for manufacturing. So, naturally they involve drives, the technology which, which the, it generates the power and the control for creating precise motion against heavy loads. We will see the, these drives and we will see the requirements on the CNC drives. So, that later on when we study the drive technology, we can refer to that and we can we will see how these drives are actually realized using electrical machines, power electronics and controls. So, let us first look at a machining process, right. So, basically in a machining process, we we are talking about manufacturing typically metal, I mean metallic materials. So, essentially it is taking a piece of metal and removing metal from that uh, precisely, so that you get a part of a specific of specific geometric dimension. So, essentially it is metal removal, which means that the actually it is removal by a tool which is made of very hard metal, things like you know carbide, diamond, etcetera. So, <coughs> um, so essentially we have to, you have to produce relative motion against of the job and the tool. So, there are various kinds of machining processes, the most common is turning, which we say, which you see in lathes, in lathe machines. So, in lathe machine what happens? is that uh, you have the, this is the work piece, which is held in a holding mechanism typically known as the chuck, known as the chuck and the chuck is rotated by a spindle, which is here there is a drive motor. So, we have a motor drive here uh, and so the work piece is rotating and this is the tool, this is the tool holder which moves. So, the tool holder can move this way, the, can move. So, therefore, it for example, it can be used to reduce the diameter of the work piece. So, as the this thing rotates and the tool moves from this end to that end with a certain degree of penetration. So, this much of metal will be removed from both sides. So, after the tool moves one cycle, the, the diameter will get reduced to this, right. So, this is the way turning produces. Now, then Typically, so in this case, note that it is the work piece which is rotating driven by the spindle, while it is the tool which is having rectilinear motion. On the other hand, if we take a, another machining process called milling, there you have a cutter. So, this is the milling cutter, which has, which has sharp teeth and which is driven by the spindle and it is the job, this is the table, this is the job work piece which is having rectilinear motion and generally two dimensional rectilinear motion. It can move this way that way and the table can move this way that way also. So, 
So you can create two dimensional motion and the cutter is rotating and uh, steady in one location. So you see the, the compared to turning it is the in, in turning it was the work piece which was rotating here it is the tool which is rotating. So it can happen both ways for example if you take another another process called drilling. So in a drilling also it is the it is the uh, it is the work piece which is which has two dimensional motion and because you may like to uh, drill a hole anywhere on the work piece. On the other hand the work piece is rotating at generally at very high speed it is so it is rotating uh, at the same time it can come down to actually drill a hole. So the work piece in this case is capable of it has a high speed rotation and it can also move along one axis whether the work uh, rather the tool can move along one axis and while rotating and the uh, and the job can move in ha have rectilinear motion have motion a two dimensional motion right. So which means so, so this shows that the that any cut um, metal cutting machine would require motion for the tool and would require motion for the work piece and these motions naturally have to be very precise. Number two is that for quick cutting they, there has to be a so, so these are generally parameterized by you know quantities like speed which shows which is related to the cutting speed of the of the of the rotating body then it could be then there is something called feed. So feed means that the stroke of the it can be the the linear motion of the tool in the case of so per rotation by how much does the tool move in the case of turning or by how much does the job move in the case of milling or depth of cut. So how much in one uh, complete cycle of motion how much material how much depth of material is removed. So such parameters are uh, set typically in such machines and naturally you can understand that uh, even if we if we want very good surface finish we, we generally have to we cannot give very high depth of cut but so for rough cuts we can for quick production we can give high depth of cuts and high feeds. So naturally that will you are removing metal metal like steel so naturally it puts a lot of load on the drive. So the idea is to create con very precise motions against very high loads. So the work piece this shows typically shows this is this shows how the movement is created. So the rotating is rotation is actually very simple it is just connected to the shaft of the spindle drive motor. So as the motor rotates the tool in the case of milling or the work piece in the or the chuck in the case of turning will rotate that is very simple. For the two for creating the two dimensional motion of the table this kind of a mechanism is created where there is a slide. So this slide can we are we are only show, showing motion in one direction. So this in this direction slide is slide can move along this because it is connected to what is known as a ball screw. So this is a ball screw. So the drive is still a motor, so there is a motor which is coupled to the ball screw maybe through a gear. So as the ball screw rotates this slide can move this way or that way just like a just like a screw motion and these ball screws are very well designed such that there is the precise motion is created and things like backlash which affect the accuracy of manufacturing are minimized and they can be minimized they are actually minimized by engineering design and whatever remains can be also mostly compensated in these machines. So to summarize if you look at the feature of the machine then we have we have to create rotational motion which is created by the spindle drive, we have to create linear motion which is created by the table drive and in, in the table drive basically the drive is rotational there is a linear motion conversion using ball screw or rack pinion generally ball screw gives better accuracy and guideways so that the 
there is no transverse motion, motions are strictly in the direction in which the drive is provided. These drives that are <coughs> employed are generally servo motor drives because you need to have precise motion control and you need to have good transient response because uh, drives have to be very precise position control is required. So therefore, they have to start and stop at the right moment and sometimes even speed ratios have to be maintained along the two axes for, uh, for cutting you know things like uh, surfaces say cylindrical surfaces or cutting like cutting corners. So we employ servo motor drives, DC drives, taper motor or AC drives. Uh, for very large machines you can have hydraulic drives also, but generally we employ DC and uh, AC drives. For very small things taper drives are uh, used, but they are uh, generally not of that high rating. So therefore, DC and AC drives are generally used, mostly DC drives, D DC and BLDC drives, brushless DC. So we will see these drives in detail in some more detail in our lessons on drives. Then you naturally you need feedback. So you have you know digital feedbacks like shaft encoders or you can have resolvers. Sometimes you can have position sensor like LVDTs or potentiometers etc. So you need basically you have to create rotation and linear motion, precise motion. So you need precise drives which are created by motors and you need speed, speed and position feedback. So they are pro pro uh, provided by the uh, sensors and similarly you have mechanical arrangements which create precise motion like ball screw etc. So this, these are the major parts in the machine. Of course there are various kinds of auxiliary parts like for example there is you know there is very high heat generation at the tool workpiece interface. So there, so there is uh, cooling, coolant has to be applied, liquid coolant has to be uh, applied directly at the tool job interface so that the uh, interface does not heat up because that will affect the quality of machining. So, so there is a coolant plus there, there are all kinds of other things like you know for, for automation there are there is whole automation setup where, where somebody can uh, enter programs. So there is an operator display. There are all kinds of protection mechanisms. So th they are they are they are the auxiliary uh, components. Plus there is power. Uh, so actually, these machines it was soon developed. The, it was soon uh, understood that. Uh, there is a lot of things to be gained if we can control the machines precisely using you know uh, digital techniques and f and finally by computer like components like especially microprocessors uh, can be interfaced to it. So this kind of controllers would lead to very precise control of the machine which is not possible generally not possible by a manual operator. So it was soon realized that these systems can lead to very high quality engineering and also reduce unproductive time. Now this term numerical control has been defined by, uh, uh, by the EIA as a system in which actions are controlled by direct insertion of numerical data at some point. So at some point uh, numerical data must be used to, to, to control the machine and the, the system must automatically interpret at least some portion of this data. So even if you do not have a computer, you can have a paper punch card reader, they, they are, they are, they are, you know, the uh, ordinary, uh, they, they were the early versions of the CNC machines. So even if you have, so you have a, you know, paper tape which is punched and, and there used to be a paper tape reader and that reader used to create the motion. So even if there is no, no explicit electronic computer here also in the paper tape you are, 
there is some numeric data which is punched and, and according to that numeric data the, the machine was controlled. That is why it is called numeric control. But, but in modern machines these things do not exist at all. Modern machines are all computer controlled. So, so basically computer numerically controlled means that computer control. So it can be a, it is generally a microprocessor, it may be a, it may be an industrial PC sometimes, it, there will be a PLC. So various kinds of industrial computers are used. So it basically is meant to replace manual actions of operators and so the instructions to the machine which are required for its operation are uh, written in the form of a kind of program called part programs which describe the activities which are interpreted and executed by the machine. So we will we'll see little later uh, what kind of things can be done using part programs. Typically you know these the CNC machines are very expensive. So it is not that uh, everybody can afford it or that for every kind of uh, uh, manufacturing operation one has to procure a CNC. So CNC will be good for parts processed frequently in small lots because if you process parts frequently in small lots then you will if you do not use automation then you are going to end up spending a lot of time by lot of setup time. So every time you have a new lot you will spend a good amount of time in, in setting up then you will manufacture since the lots are small so you, you are going to manufacture a little while and then again you have to spend time in setup. So the actual uh, productive time of a machine which is just the time when it cuts the metal is actually reduced. So therefore the CNC machine is suitable for this because it cuts down that set of time significantly using automation. But the part geometry is complex so you, you, you do not have to really rely on the operator skill you, you, have, you have to just write a you have to just produce a correct uh, uh, part program and if the part program is correct then the, then the machine being, being automated will uh, absolutely correctly will produce that geometry irrespective of the operator skill. Tolerances are closed because the kind of controls that you apply, the kind of controls that you apply are, are so sophisticated that it is not possible for manual operators to, uh, to apply such controls and therefore very high uh, uh, compliance to the tolerances can be realized. When there are several operations needed on the part, again it is needed to set up time, you may need to, uh, you may need to have various kinds of tools working on that. So therefore again you will lose a lot of time by you know changing tools while, while with the things like technologies like automatic tool changers and uh, wide variety of tool magazines, these, this, this tool changing is, is generally uh, achieved very efficiently in CNC machines. And parts are expensive because when parts are expensive you do not like to uh, take a chance that due to faulty manufacturing uh, some, 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 some part will get wasted. So that is why you take help of a machine which, which once it is set up properly it will go on working and producing the parts without any mistake or failure. When engineering design changes are, are again likely again this is also related to setup time. So you see that there are basically two points. One is situations where a good amount of setup time is required and secondly where situations are situations where very high uh, skill, skills with to, to cater to complex geometry and close tolerances are required. So it is during these for these two reasons that CNC, uh, CNC score over non-CNC machines or, or manually operated machines. So from advantages and disadvantages you have flexibility is one advantage which is achieved by programming and so you can easily change a just, just change a program and your whole setup will get changed or you can have pre-stored programs which can be just, just need to be loaded which is a much faster operation. Disadvantage is uh, and, and, and of course accuracy, flexibility and accuracy. Disadvantage, com corresponding disadvantages could be one is, one is cost so there is a these machines are very expensive and they have very high costs and maintenance. So you need very uh, expert maintenance for these machines because if, if, if they are not maintained properly then they are going to be damaged and then finally they will lose their accuracy and things like that. So overall productivity is 
much improved with, with due to re reduced setup time, automated tool changing, which is again reduces setup time, I mean, unproductive time. Sometimes some of these machines will have inherent material handling. So if you want to tool change a tool, the, the machine will uh, stop the machine, take out the tool, put it in the tool magazine, bring out another tool. So all these material handling work will be done by the machine itself. Scrap rate is reduced because you must have, it is assumed that the, that the part programs are written with uh, carefully using scientific, you know, optimization methods. So from a given piece of material, because you are not going to, uh, you, you have much more precise operation, so you can have uh, optimal material utilization, therefore scrap rate will be reduced. Manpower is reduced because much of it, much of the work in these machines can are done automatically. Sometimes, you know, you program a machine for a day and, and feed it with enough work material uh, once at a time and then run it whole day without any kind of supervision or any kind of operating personnel, these, these machines can go on manufacturing one, of, one after the other the pulse, the uh, parts. They have reduced downtime because they are, these are the benefits that you get by paying that high sum of money for its cost. So downtime is reduced because these machines are very well made, they are, their engineering is very strong. On the other hand, the disadvantage is that the operation of these machines and maintenance require very highly skilled operators, not only just skilled in operation, but in various other kinds of technologies, uh, for example, part program writing, etc., they may require skilled operators. So these are the, so we have seen that CNC machines in, in many, many situations are amply justified. So now we'll see that what kind of motions these CNCs can be created such that, you know, automatically parts can be manufactured. So there are generally two kinds of machines. One kind of machines are capable of having, making point to point motions. So typically used in drilling. So you say that drill a hole here, then a ho hole here, then a hole here, here and here. So this is, so you are just specifying certain points. So the machine is coming to a point, doing a certain operation, then again going to another point and go doing another operation. So the operations that the machines are doing are essentially point operations like drilling. On the other hand, you can have uh, systems where you can specify the uh, start point in the coordinate space, the end point and then specify some kind of uh, interpolation, let us say a circular interpolation. So the, so the machine will start from here and depending on your instruction, will cut an arc, suppose we are talking about circular interpolation, will cut an arc from here to here or it could also cut an arc, it could also cut an arc between these two points. So that depends on what you have specified. If you have specified, if you have specified a clockwise arc, then this will be drawn. If you have specified an anti-clockwise arc, then this will be, this will be cut. So these are called contouring systems. You can note that here the controlled cutting goes on throughout the journey and, and to be able to achieve certain kinds of uh, profiles like a circle, uh, the X and Y axis drives for the table uh, have to be very coordinated to be able to get that contour. So it is fundamental to define coordinate systems because all the part program instructions are given, uh, most of them are involved, especially the main uh, cutting uh, instructions, part program instruction all involve, you know, various coordinates. So the coordinate space is actually very simple. So this is like, you know, X, I'm sorry, so it's like x in this direction, y in this direction, and it's a, it's a right handed coordinate system. So therefore, z will be the vertical direction. And therefore, you can also have, uh, you can also similarly define rotational directions. So if you take, uh, again, a right handed system, then if you curl your fingers around this, then the positive direction, this direction is positive, which where the thumb will point towards 
the positive z axis. So, these are given according to that. So, these will be positive rotations and these will be positive translations. Then Then all these you know points and coordinates which are mentioned are, are can be mentioned in two ways. One is an incremental or an absolute system. Generally the absolute system is preferred. So you see that if you want to specify the x axis coordinates of these four points, then in the incremental system you will say suppose this is x, here the x coordinate is x. So this is going to be say x plus 300. Similarly, this is going to be and once you have done x plus 300, now your current position is at 1. So, now x, x is the x coordinate of this point is x plus 300 and the coordinate of this point is x plus 500. So, in the incremental system, you always do it from the current point. So, the current point is here. So, this is going to be 200. So, therefore, the next instruction to the machine will be uh, x plus 300 actually this should have been 200. So, x plus 300, x plus 200, then x, then you have come to this point and then if you want to go to 3, then you have to do x minus 300 and then from 3 to 1, you have to do x minus 200, then you have to go this way. On the other hand, if you are using absolute, then you just always do it from a stationary origin that you have assumed in the coordinate space of the machine. So, this is going to be, so the four coordinates are going to be uh, x plus 300, x plus 500, 300 plus 200 is 500 and then this is again x plus 200 because this is 200 and then finally x. Now, the, why the absolute system is preferred? Because suppose you are trying to dr hold a drill at these locations. So, even if this location is in error, this location will not be if it is an absolute system, but if it is an incremental system, then if w at one point the, the, the geometric coordinates are, uh, are not the same, then there is a ch high chance that all other geometric coordinates will also get affected. If the uh, system of providing coordinates is incremental and this exposition, th there will also be a unit. So, these exposition's that are meant uh, will be typically mentioned are generally mentioned in terms of what is known as a basic length unit. So, a basic un length unit is the suppose you have a shaft encoder. So, the so the shaft encoder gives say 500 pulses per revolution let us let us do this to understand what is the basic length unit. So, suppose shaft encoder. gives 500 pulses per per revolu rotation per rotation on the other hand the ball screw or the ball screw pitch is say 1 mm so one rotation is equal to 1 mm advancement 1 1 mm displacement So now one pulse of shaft encoder is equal to 1 by 500 mm is equal to 0 0.002 mm, right. So this is the basic length unit. This is the smallest unit of displacement that this, this, is, this is the smallest displacement that the machine can be aware of because this will be one pulse of encoder. So, that is the smallest and that is called the basic length unit. So, all these can be are generally stated in terms of the basic length unit. Similarly, if you have circular interpolation, then you have to ask give the start time, I am sorry,
So you have to give the start coordinate, you have to give the end coordinate. And you have to give the, this, this is going to be a circular arc, so you have to give the coordinate of the center. Of center, or rather the distance, not coordinate, distance of, of center from x and y. And you can, sometimes you are also given, if this is given, you should be able to draw the circle. Sometimes, you know, um, the final point is given. So, this is the final point. So, given these, you can try to, and taking this as center, we have to draw a, draw a circular arc and take the tool along this circular arc. So, this is the way typically the circle parameters are specified. So, this, this i and j will give the coordinate of the circle, this k and k e will give the two end points and then, uh, you know, you can either, you can draw the circle like this also. So, whether you will, this is start, so if you want to draw this circle, then you will go this way, which is clockwise. If you wanted to draw this circle, then you will go anti-clockwise. So, it needs to be mentioned whether the circle has to be drawn in clockwise or in anti-clockwise direction. Accordingly, either this one or this one will be So, so these are the various you know circular interpolation directions. So, along the various axes. Now we 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 see that in a in a particular part program. Actually, you know part programs are nothing but they are actually. Uh, particular form in which the, with which the uh, manufacturing uh, people have been, have been familiar and convenient, but otherwise it's just like, it, it just specifies some operation. So, every unit of operation is, is called a block, right. So, a part program block. So, the, the part program basically consists of a number of blocks which get executed. So, in a sense, it is like, you know, you know, it is like these CLC runs. So, if a, so uh, just like a, a, a real ladder logic diagram is also a just, just a fictitious graphical arrangement. So, that people who develop programs, that is the, the people from the domain, they can understand it. So, similarly here, we write part programs. So, then finally, these, these, these part programs are going to be, uh, when from the part program, the actual execute, real time executive, which controls the two drives, this it, it reads the part program and then actually drives the various activities in the machine. So, the first, so you can have such parameters in a typical program block like you can have an, you can have a block skip, you can have a block skip. So, if you have that block skip, then, then, then that, that particular block is ignored. Similarly, you have, you are executing a sequence of num blocks, so you should have a block number. Then there are some functions which are called preparatory functions, for example, you know, uh, deciding on whether the, whether the uh, positioning system is going to be absolute or incremental, whether the values which are given are uh, in, in metric or in inch, where is the origin of the coordinate system, etcetera, etcetera. So, there are some preparatory functions that are to be executed before executing a block. Similarly, dimensional information is provided as in, 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 in x, y, z, okay, decimal point is fine. Then you have to provide, you know, things like feed rate, spindle speed, tool number, because tools are uniquely identified by their number in a, in a, in a magazine. So, if the machine has to select a particular tool, the tool number has to be given. Similarly, the tool offset function, so 
you know, there are actually what happens is that for exact uh, dimensional accuracy, there are because the tool has a finite, you know, radius, the tool actually has a finite radius. So, So, when the tool moves because of this, there is some distance between the center of the, uh, between some, you know, some logical center of the tool tip and the actual point where it is making a contact and it is not only making a contact, it is actually gradually getting worn away. So, this length is actually changing, it is actually shrinking. So, there are various kinds of offsets are produced and these, these uh, that is when you are actually giving the motion, so you have to give the motion to the tool in such a manner that after taking care of this finite tool head situation, then the right parameter will be obtained. So, therefore, the tools must be little bit offset. So, those functions are to be set during preparatory phase and there, are, there can be various other miscellaneous functions. There can be other various kinds of auxiliary functions also like switch off coolant, switch on coolant and things like that. And finally, it has to have an end of block signal. So, typically you see a block is defined like this, this is the num, this is the uh, number, then there is a g command, then there are some x y commands which are, uh, which are you know uh, position coordinates. Even apart from that, there are various other kinds of commands which are specified. So, we are, we are not going to uh, look at all of them. So in, so, in short, a particular program block will actually contain such a set of instructions. Sometimes these, these instructions are, 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 are mostly optional. So, therefore, you may or may not have some instructions. There can be only one uh, so called operand and there can be or there can be even 6, 7 operands in a particular instruction depending on the requirement. So, when you CNC machines are typically characterized or classified by a, by, by a, by a number of you know features. So, uh, so some, some of them are being mentioned here. So, you have you know number of controlled axes, so 2 or 4 and uh, so, the same machine may have a may have a number of controlled axes. What kind of interpolation you are doing, whether it is linear or whether it is circular or whether it can be parabolic, etcetera. Then what kind of feedback you are using, whether you are using digital feedback or you are using analog feedback, what is the what is the basic length unit. Similarly, the feed rates, maximum feed rates that can be achieved that can be achieved and there are certain uh, per minute or per revolution and there are certain other modes related which are called you know rapid traverse rates. So, when you are moving from one hole to another, so you have drilled this hole when you are moving to another then during this time you are not actually cutting and, and, and you need to move at the fastest possible rate. So, that, so that is called a rapid traverse rate. Then the kinds of the part programs that can be uh, that are used to program it, this is maximum size, I O devices, etc. various program parameters. Also for also some programming parameters that is if, if, if the operator or some engineer wants to develop a new program, then how, then how easy it is and I mean how it is to be loaded. So, there can be various methods for example, uh, only manual or can be seen, you know background foreground. So, uh, it when you have background then you are actually doing things normally. But you can always go to a go to a, go to what is known as the background and then start developing some program. While in the foreground, something else like a like a like a manufacturing operation is actually going on. Similarly, the various environments in which the program developer has to work that can be graphical or or that can be menu driven. These are these are very standard things today. So, one has to examine what kind of programming uh, facilities exist in the machine before buying it. Similarly, 
since accuracy is, is generally a very major issue, so therefore, <coughs> um, therefore, one has to really look at the various kinds of compensation facilities that are available in the machine because they will, they are typically used for, uh, for achieving a very high accuracy. So, for example, the, the there can be there can be backlash uh, in the gear, or even there can be backlash in the shaft angle encoder. So, it can be either on the gear or in the ball screw. It can also be on the shaft angle encoder. So, there can be lead screw pitch error that is the if one rotation of the lead screw may not lead, lead to lead to an advancement of exactly the same amount all along the screw. Then there are compensation required for tool length and the cutter radius, the thing that I was just talking now because of the finite dimension of the tool, uh, you need to create such a motion such that the tip actually cuts according to the position where you want to cut it. But for that the tool has to be moved in a in a certain uh, with, 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 with certain offsets. So, these offsets are to be always uh, because, because the tool will get worn. So, therefore, these two these offsets are to be regularly uh, measured and then the proper compensation should be given. Similarly, temperature for very high temperature firstly product quality can be uh, affected and secondly sometimes dimensions can also be affected. Various kinds of you know thread cutting that are possible and then what kind of PLCs are used, how it how the PLC is going to going to interact with the drives controller and the uh, number of IOs that it can handle. You see that typically as we will see that the PLC is not to be used for the drive, for, for the drive so close sampled and uh, control is required and sometimes the computation is also involved. So, under these situations it will not be uh, really useful to, uh, to uh, so uh, Right, so it so so it will not be really useful to actually use a use a PLC to to provide a a uh, control of these drives. So therefore, some special dedicated processors are used, and the PLCs are often used for auxiliary functions or as supervisory controllers. So uh, so we look at architectures of CNC machines. So, that is what I was saying that typically a CNC machine will be made of this kind of unit. So, you have the you have the basic mechanism you know that is the consisting of the slide, the screw, the gears, the uh, guide, the chuck, etcetera. So, these are the mechanisms which hold and actually mechanical parts which hold and move the job and the tool. So, they are driven by motors, typically servo motors. This can be DC, DL, DC or even induction motors sometimes. So, these motors are as we will see in our future lessons that these motors are to be driven by very sophisticated uh, drive so, these are you know power electronic devices, power electronic devices plus they are controllers, control electronics. And now, these are again controlled by these. So, so these are this control electronics and the power electronics is often controlled by microprocessor based. Sometimes in this case, they are modern machines are becoming DSP based or digital signal processor based drive which can provide uh, very very sophisticated control for uh, these machines. Along with that we also have another kind of computer called PLCs that is what we are seeing which is mainly used for discrete automated discrete automation. And there is also, also a man machine interface which uh, lets the operator program it and, and also monitor the status of the machine and also uh, they 
there are mechanisms for uh, generating various kinds of alarms. Okay, so, this is the general structure of a CNC machine. Typically, the drives that are used are sometimes they are open loop, uh, especially when they, they have you know switched, uh, let us say, let us say low power drives like uh, stepper motor drives, uh, which are cheap because they are, they are actually their, their drive electronics is much simpler. So, we have this uh, sometimes we have used this kind of drives which are open loop and uh, use very simple drive electronics. So, we can have in the case of uh, motors we can have step motor drives, we can have step motor drives or in the case of hydraulic drives we have proportional valves. Uh, where we you just give a command and a proportional force or displacement is so you can you can have a hydraulic motor or a step motor and uh, so the machine is driven in open loop but the best and the most accurate drives are all uh, naturally that they are they are closed loop drives so in so you have the usual you know motor so, which can be AC or DC or sometimes we have what we know as a brushless DC which is actually an AC motor, but uh, which behaves like a DC motor. So, it has the advantages of the both the worlds or, or it can be a hydraulic motor also and then we have the servo drive for the hydraulics uh, which is again controlled by the uh, digital various kinds of digital and analog electronics digital processors and analog electronics. And finally, we have the sensors which give the feedback. So, these are the closed loop drive configurations which are typically implemented for these machines. So, now we will take a look at the drive requirements for these machines. So, we have two kinds of drives one drive is a feed drive. So, if you see basically if you see the load on the drive, then the load is given by an expression like this, where the load torque this is T L load torque is uh, the torque. So, this is this is the force is the cutting force which is occurring at the uh, which is in this case let us say in the case of turning which is occurring at the tip in the case of turning the the feed drive is moving the tool right. So, the so the 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 job is rotating the job is rotating like this and the tool is moving job is rotating at one position and the tool is moving from the tool is moving from one side to another right. So, the force is being created on the tip of the tool and the tool is being driven from a screw. So, the screw is rotating here, so the tool is moving. So, the load on the screw which can be reflected as a load on the motor through a through the gearing mechanism that is used is <coughs> can be calculated by this force multiplied by this length arm, this length arm lead of the ball screw also cutting force required in axial direction of feed. So, th then that is the lead of the ball screw and then so, how is this achieved? Because if you have it is achieved by something like you know uh, energy con energy conservation. So, the torque into one rotation of the screw is going to be the force into the pitch because if by 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 one rotation of the screw the linear motion created is one pitch unit. So, therefore, if we have energy conservation then F into the pitch of the lead the pitch of the ball screw must be equal to the torque because you know one rotation one rotation. So, one per rotation is twice pi radians. So, twice pi into T L this is the input energy. What is the output energy? The output energy is this force into pitch 
and multiplied by some efficiency factor. So you know input and output factors will have will have efficiency plus there are certain other friction torques. So this is the load torque and we see that it remains it remains more or less constant right. So it remains more or less constant irrespective of the speed. So uh, irrespective of the speed it remains constant. Similarly, so you see just to explain that, so this is the ball screw, so you have weight on the slide and you have various friction forces number 1, number 2 you have cutting force. So all these forces are going to generate, are going to be reflected as load torque on the screw through this mechanism. So, these are the spurious load torques. So, because of the weight, you have friction, you have bearing reaction, and this is the main force, which is the cutting force. So, Tc is friction torque, and 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 eta is efficiency. So, F depends on the machine design and the material removal rate. So, the depth of cut. So you see that the torque actually uh, depends on the, in a, in a way it depends on the material removal rate. So it depends on the depth of cut as well as the uh, speed. So if, if, if they are generally constant, then a, then, a, then a constant torque operation is needed on the feed drive, correct. Sometimes it may happen that you know for there is a for, for, for short times because of material inhomogeneity that is encountered sometimes these torques can suddenly rise to a very high value but that should not affect the cutting. So therefore the, the for short periods the, the machine actually should be uh, able to handle the machine actually should be able to handle uh, uh, good amount of you know overload torque. So high overload torques for for short durations such drives should be able to uh, provide while for continuous duty a much lower level of torque may be uh, uh, achieved. For the spindle it turns out that the again the drive requirement is related to the quantity of material removed. So the quantity of material removed is feed per revolution of spindle, okay, feed per revolution of spindle, T is the depth of cut and D is the diameter of the workpiece of the cutter and eta is the RPM, then linear velocity is naturally pi d eta by 1000. So, uh, so, so, so this is the linear velocity. So, this linear velocity into s into t, this gives the quantity of material removed. Okay. Now, the power, it turns out that for the spindles, the power is actually proportional to Q into K S where K S is actually the what is known as the specific cutting force per unit chip cross section. So it, so it depends on the material and the it depends on both the material and the work piece and Q is the material removal rate. So in this case, it, it turns out that the power depends on the material removal rate. So therefore, for constant material removal rate, typically in, in manufacturing, we are going to fix that. We are going to fix the, fix the material removal rate depending on the kind of production that we want to have. So in, for the spindle drives, we have constant power requirement generally. So the spindle drive characteristic is generally of this shape where you have a large constant power region and so this gives the maximum speed so the 
So, irrespective of the speed a constant power is to be kept. So, we will see later when we see uh, the, the, the various drive characteristics that how in the motors we actually have these regions of constant torque and constant power. So, we will operate these drives accordingly in the various regions. So, in the desirable features of machine drives are spindle drives should they should be accurate from their rotational speed point of view while feed drives should be very accurate in terms of position resolution in terms of microns. Uh, spindle drives should have fast dynamic response and uh, very wide for, on the other hand feed drives could be operated in very very wide speed ranges. So, for some materials they could move real fast for some materials they can move real slow especially that also depends on the on, on other things like surface finish. Similarly, uh, overload capacity four quadrant operation for example, feed drives because they need very good positional accuracy they always have to have four quadrant operation while spindle drives generally do not require that they have they, they have unidirectional motion they can be two quadrant motion is enough and and very high uh, very high speed braking etcetera are, 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 are not needed at all. But there can be large overloads in encountered especially due to material uh, homogeneity. So, while there the speed range should be large, but it need not be excessively large. Similarly, so feed drives require a very good transient response. So, they have the, the, so they require very fast response. So, low electrical and mechanical time constants are needed and and they need constant working torque. Spindle drives on the other hand should be of much more compact size because they are generally to be mounted on a spindle which should not take too much should not be too uh, too big. So, we have come to the end of the lesson summary. So, we have come to the lesson summary and uh, so what have we seen? So, we have seen the basic structural features of a CNC machine what is made made with uh, we have seen its basic operational features how it works and we have seen that basic structure of programs. So, we have seen uh, basic look into the blocks and we have looked at the drive requirements typical drive requirements for spindle and feed drives. We have also seen the basic advantages of this machine that they are much more accurate and much more flexible. So, among some points to ponder you can name the main components of a CNC machine. So, try to name them mention its major advantages and the main reasons that is main technological reasons from which these, these advantages arise. Name three features of a part program block. So, various features mention three differences in the requirements of a spindle drive from that of a feed drive how they are different. So, that is all for today thank you very much. Thank you.